the tone of your message. I think a lot of people are talking about that today. It's 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 more positive. It's more forward thinking. Uh, is, do you believe that that is the advantage that you bring to this race over uh, over a former President Trump or a Ron DeSantis or some of your other opponents? I think what I bring to the table is the ability to persuade the American people that our conservative principles work mm -hmm. and then there's proof in it. My life disproves the lives of the radical left. The radical left, today they are focusing on a culture of grievance. Mm -hmm. And what we've experienced is the seeds of greatness. They grow and they create a harvest. I think there's this new drug called victimhood that President Biden and the radical left seem to be getting Americans hooked on. There's nothing further from the truth of, of American exceptionalism right. than victimhood and grievance. Former Pennsylvania Senator, Convention of State Senior Advisor, and Senior mm -hmm. Political Analyst Rick Santorum joins me. Okay, what do you think? What do you think of uh, Senator yeah, I mean, You could just see the joy in his face. I mean, one of the things that, that Tim has going for him is authenticity. I mean, this is, he's a real person. Uh, he has a real story. He, 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 uh, you it's know, a remarkable story. It's a remarkable story. And he emotes the energy that Tom was referring to, the question. He emotes the optimism, the hopefulness, the can do spirit. Um, he does have, you know, he, because of his story, he can talk about victimhood. I mean, this is not which he is not. Which he, which is, he not. is not. Which he is not. He did embrace that. I mean, I, I've known Tim for a long, long time. I met him when I was campaigning back in 2009 and 2010 when he was a city councilman in in, in Charleston. And you know, he's always been that. He 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 go. He's a assistant pastor. He was for for a time, or it, it spoke in church. So he's a man of faith. He's the real deal. And and I think that's. That's going to attract a lot of voters. And the, you know, I think it's interesting, Trump's comment, because Trump's comment obviously is, hey, come on in the race, more of the merrier. You know, that, that depresses the anti-Trump vote. It splits it up more, and that's what he's thinking. Uh, I wouldn't be so quick to welcome Tim into this race. I think Tim could be a, a, a real competitor. Well, the thing about so many of the candidates, they, um, it, like you've got DeSantis or Christie, or he's not in yet, but any of those people, they're, they're a lot like Trump and not maybe as loud and boisterous, but I mean they're they're forceful. Um, uh, Senator Tim Scott's different. Yeah, you know he has he has his own lane. Whether he get you know whether that's the right lane or you know in terms of whether that's the one that'll lead to the nomination, he is not. He is different from the rest of them. He is first up. He's very articulate. I mean, he, again, he's authentic. He's articulate. Uh, he is Reagan-esque in some in some respects because he ha he has that great communication uh, gift and. That optimism, that you know, hope in, in, in the shiny city on the hill of America, and again, the personal story. Uh, so he is different. There's no question. He's in a different lane. There's a lane there for someone like that. And we'll see whether in this time in America, when it's so divided and there's so much antipathy out there and there's so much anger among conservatives against the left and what they're doing to the country, whether that kind of message in this time is the right message or Wait, he's, not. He's also loaded with money. He's well, he has, he, has, he has a backer. Yeah, no, I'm just, wait, yeah. Well, I'm just saying that that makes a big difference, too. That's certainly helpful. You can have the best message in the uh, world if you can't, you know, if you don't have the money. I, you know, I, I go back to my race in 2012 and the fact that Sheldon Adelson was, a, you know, giving tens of millions of dollars to Newt Gingrich and made him in the race and put him in the race. Uh, you get out of a race for president because you don't have any more money. And if you've got, uh, the, you know, Larry Ellison backing you and, and tens of millions of dollars in super PAC money, you can stay in the race a long time. Well, I don't I mean, you know, you live in this town long enough, you get to know everybody. And I don't know a single person. I'm not saying people you know, should vote for him or not vote for him, but I've never met a single person who doesn't like Senator Tim Scott and think that he's, you know, the, you know he's, that he's honest. I mean, you can think that some politicians are slick or whatever or just telling, saying something to get elected. But, I, you know, I think, I think you're right about Tim Scott. I mean, I hate, I hate to say it. it Usually nice guys don't get elected president. I mean, if you just look at the, the history of, uh, of the presidency in, in recent times, uh, but many people are sick of the fighting. You know, that made me mean, like, you know, it's gone so belligerent in this town. You know, maybe people are sick of it. I mean, I think that's probably what he's banking on. I, well, if, if that's the case, look at Trump's numbers. You don't get a sense that people are sick of the fighting because the vast majority of Republicans right now are saying, you know, Donald Trump's our guy. It's that's someone who is just the antithesis of sick, sick of the fighting. This is a guy who's in for the fight. So I'm saying I think that the mood of the electorate, it certainly was in 2016. It certainly was in 2020. Maybe you're right. Maybe things are changing. Not yet, 
but we'll wait and see. I once had lunch with Senator Tim Scott um, a couple years ago, and it was like maybe 10 years ago, and he told me that, he, that his favorite group was Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> I think they're from South Carolina. Yeah, so that's a little bit of trivia about yeah. him. I don't know if he still likes that music, but I always stuck Great with music. It. Great music. Uh, all right, what about uh, Governor DeSantis? He's rumored to be jumping in the race in a couple days. Yeah, uh, this is not good news for, for Ron DeSantis, and uh, just for the reasons that Trump is encouraging Tim into the race, because the more anti-Trump votes there are, it splits up the anti- there, Look, there is a sizable... Uh, part of the Republican base, particularly in New Hampshire and, and Iowa, I believe, that are not uh, in for Trump. And the more people that slice that up or make it more competitive, uh, the easier it is to for a lower percentage of number, maybe 40 percent, 35 percent, to win those primaries. And you know, if Trump wins the first few primaries, it makes it really, really hard for for anybody to uh, to rise up and compete against him. Um, Chris Christie rumors that he might uh, make a decision to get in. Yeah, I think there's a lane for Tim Scott. Not sure there's a lane for Chris Christie. I don't see it. Uh, you know, they, the, uh, both DeSantis and, and Trump certainly have the aggressive, in-your-face type of approach to campaigning that Chris is known for. Uh, Chris is more moderate. Uh, this electorate is not seen to be a particularly moderate uh, electorate. And, and I, again, I just don't see the lane for Chris at this point. But, again, I, I, I never criticize someone for running. I... I Having run myself and, you and know, went in there with, when there is no chance, I'm not going to criticize someone who everyone says he has no chance because that's not the case. And to all of us who thought in 2015 when Trump announced he'd never win, so I, I don't make predictions yeah, don't either. Make predictions. I don't make predictions anymore either. I'm, I'm done with that. I'll, it's early. Senator Rick Santorum, nice to see you. Thank you.